Let's talk about what's happening with this election. So Democrats are preparing for one of the worst elections in their history. They are preparing to lose the House of Representatives. They are, along with the Senate, as Americans care more about kitchen table issues, like we've talked about here on the show, they care about their energy bills. They care mm -hmm. about gas prices. They care. About, I was thinking about it today. I'm like, of the things I care about, I care about the safety of my family. Yes. My kids, right? Protecting them against crime, making sure they're safe, making sure they have healthy food to eat and a roof over their head. Like, that's what I do as a father, right? That's my main focus. I can tell you what's not on that list. All of your woke political agenda items that are way down at the bottom Stuff that might be fun to well, talk about thing. with friends, but I don't really they're give gonna a be, shit. They're going to be running primarily on social issues. That's like their whole thing is social issues. They're not yeah. even focused on the economy because that's the bad, you know, part of their platform right now. They don't. Well, even they're talk very about that. heavy on abortion right now. They're making that mm -hmm. almost a single issue. That's their uh, number one issue. Yeah, it's. Yeah. And by the way, it's the least issue. Like if you look at the list of issues, it's at the bottom of what most voters actually care about. So they're running that. It's like, who came up with this idea? And this is, the, you know, this is the idea, right? No, January but, 6th, January 6th, insert, you know, that's their January 6th and abortion, top of their list. Which are buzzworthy, which are things, I think that they are misinterpreting buzz on the internet with political engagement. Because yes, I can work myself into a frenzy over these issues that are gendered, that are classist and that kind of thing. But that's not why you vote. No. Uh, a lot of people are not driven to the polls just to save abortion, but they actually think that that's the case. Now, here's the thing. And the numbers don't support that. You do vote that way during peacetime and when things are good. So when things are good and you have money in the bank and you're safe and there's no crime and all of those other things, then those like kitchen, then, then those kitchen table items kind of go out the window. It's the cultural stuff that actually can move an election like well, in Ohio under George people, W. Bush. Right. If people paid attention anyway, they would know, though, the Democrats already had a, a chance to codify Roe v. Wade and they didn't do it. So they had a chance to fix this already. So they think now they're going to go ahead and do something different. Yeah. So it's like even yes. their main issue falls apart if you if you are educated and know what they've done in the past. Yes. Um, but abortion was something that was very important to Trump voters during peacetime when they thought that he would have Supreme Court nominations, which he did. But in this instance, what are what are Democrats even thinking that they're going to uh, change during abortion is something federal, which Democrats have not shown the appetite to do. Well, the number one issue for Americans during the Trump run up, run up was the was the border and it was jobs being outsourced and the lack of jobs like jobs disappearing overseas and 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 the border and immigration and guess what? He said, build a wall and I'm going to bring jobs back home. Stop jobs going overseas. And yes, abortion was a part of it. But in the Rust Belt in Pennsylvania, it was about jobs. It was a, it's always about jobs. It's a, the economy, stupid. And so look at this Senate map today. This is the latest Senate map. This is a real clear politics average right now. Polling. Here's the most recent polling this morning. Shows Senate flipping entirely to Republicans, 53 to 47. It's going to be a really bad night for them on November 8th. It was also inevitable that they would start sounding the alarm. Democrats would start sounding the alarm that the very, the very integrity of our election system is under attack by right-wing extremists hell-bent on changing the outcome of the election that's what they're telling us now we should point out that if you challenge the integrity of the election system in the united states you could be deplatformed for spreading misinformation well, only if only only if it's a specific year Oh, you can right. do it if it's 2016. Yes. You can do it if it's 2024 and upcoming, but there's one year you cannot tie it to. Oh. You cannot mention that year. I love the double standards, right? So it's very yeah. strange then that this person is doing just that, trying to keep people from going out to vote because they might get attacked by vicious hordes of people if they do go to vote. Watch. Hello, Indivisibles. I'm here to highlight something that <laughs> is keeping me up at night. And I know this group really understands what I'm about to say. I know we're all focused on the 2022 midterm elections and they are incredibly important. But we also have to look ahead because you know what? Our opponents certainly are. Right-wing extremists already have a plan to literally steal the next presidential election. Oh. And they're not making a secret of it the right-wing controlled Supreme Court may be poised to rule 
on giving state legislatures, yes, you heard me that correctly, state legislatures the power to overturn presidential elections. Just think, if that happens, the 2024 presidential election could be decided not by the popular vote or even by the anachronistic electoral college, but by state legislatures. Oh, oh so you don't extremists. like the electoral college now. Can so I the, just point out really quick as a video guy, that's a horrible teleprompter placement because you could see that she was reading that like oh, so... Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you could see her eyes. You could see that, like, right there. You knew she's reading a script. Someone wrote this script yeah. and presented that I have a very important message. Right-wing extremists are already planning to to over to throw a wrench into the this election on November eighth. We cannot let them do that. So they, I see, they they challenge elections. They get amplified, right? When they challenge them, they get amplified. But when the other side does it, they get deplatformed. You see, this is a brilliant tactic because the majority of early voting has already, I mean, the, the majority of early voting has historically been Democrat. Early votes typically are Democrat. And Republicans historically wait and vote at on election day at the polls. That is, that is the data. So now that early voting is pretty much done, they've been doing it now for a month in some areas. Now would be a great time to start scaring people about going out and voting on election day, especially if you're an independent voter. Like, you know, you might be on the fence. Well, I would just probably, maybe it's best for your own safety. You know, that's what they're saying. Don't go, maybe you just don't want to go. We've got all of our votes in, so no need to throw in some other votes for the other side right now. We've got our blue votes in. Just, you know, maybe those red votes, you don't need to go because it's a safety concern. So here's a tweet from Greg Price. He says, questioning elections when Democrats win makes you a dangerous insurrection. Questioning elections when Republicans win makes you a hero. Those are the rules of the media. Yes. Now, Hillary isn't the only one saying this because now it's like they're reading from that same script that she was just reading from because they know they're going to lose. Democrats across the country are now using the same tactic. Here's Clint Smith in Arizona. These are the same white nationalists who are anti-American, who want to use intimidation tactics to try to get their way. It's the same people that are down there at the polling booths trying to intimidate voters. This needs to stop. Yeah. Well, then how do you stop it? Because there are anti-intimidation laws, there are anti-campaigning laws around polling places. So uh, we've had things in place, structures in place for a really long time to make it safe to vote. So. I don't know. What's your police force for? What's, you know, you well, can... I think the concern is, is the, the drop boxes and stuff like that, because of what happened, you know, at, during that one year, mm -hmm. there's going to be people that are going to be watching like Hawks, the, the, the voting, um, the integrity the drop of those boxes, boxes and all that stuff. Yeah. 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 It's going to be armed hordes. I mean, you, you just got to watch out, right? It's going to be, you might run into a militia. Yeah. <laughs> right. So the white house is now pushing the same message this garbage argument that people simply, you know, can't vote in certain states because of laws that are stopping them from voting. You know, this is a problem. Listen to Jean-Pierre on the voting problems. Host of anti-voter policies forced on states that challenge America's fundamental fundamental right uh, to vote, right? The access to voting. And so this is, uh, this is against our most basic values, uh, including- Oh, well, meanwhile, there's zero evidence of this. So I'd love for her to, I'd love for a reporter to push back on that. Can you please show us the evidence of this where someone is being kept from voting? Like they go to vote or they go to make file an early, early ballot or early voting and they're just, they're, they're turned away. They're intimidated and told they can't do it. Show us the evidence. I'd love to see it because you're not going to find it. But they did ask Trump for evidence when he started this in the run up for the last election. He was pushed on it and they laughed right in his face. Mm -hmm. They're like, you don't have evidence, knock it off. Um, and so for the press corps to let her say this without pushing back, okay. Yeah, so there's zero evidence is higher voter turnout and voter suppression happen at the same time. How does that, how does that occur? So they have incredibly high early voting turnout, but yet votes are being, voters are being suppressed. Can you square that for me? <laughs> like, doesn't really make sense, does it? Like, how, how are you squaring this? I don't understand it. But she said that with a straight face. And I'm looking for the evidence. I can't find any. If you have some, I'd love to see it. 
In fact, in Georgia, voting is already breaking records for turnout there. Much higher than in 2018, in fact. Watch a reporter give uh, Jean-Pierre the straight scoop and the straight facts on what's happening in Georgia and asks her to clarify a message from President Biden a few years ago. Watch. Biden last year likened the, the new Georgia voting law to, quote, Jim Crow in the 21st century. But turnout so far in the state's midterm elections has smashed midterm records. Uh, today, it topped 1 million votes overall. That's about 70 percent more than 2018 on par with the presidential election turnout. Was President Biden wrong with this assessment of Georgia's, Georgia's voting law? Where does he stand by that Jim Crow comparison? So, as you know, I got to be careful. Uh, I cannot get Get into politics from here, uh, so won't com comment specifically on that race or on the elections or the data that's coming out. Okay, so, but that had nice dodge there because that actually had nothing to do with the race. He was asking you about what your boss said last year. So you work for this guy, right? He's your boss. These were his comments. You, it has nothing to do with the race. She's not. Yeah, asking but that's you. that's that's political though, Clayton. We can't. Oh, okay. they can't talk politics can't there. Talk. Good okay. dodge. Gets you off the hook with that. Yeah. Meanwhile, in Pennsylvania, this is amazing. We want to talk about election integrity. Let's look at Pennsylvania, my home state. This morning, we got word from the Pennsylvania Secretary of State's office that they will likely not have the results of the election on election night. What? Yeah. The Pennsylvania Secretary of State, she's the acting Secretary of State, Leah Chapman revealed that there will likely be delays in posting the results from the state's midterm elections. She says, quote, it's really important for us to get accurate information about the election process in Pennsylvania. So voters in the public know that when there are delays in counting, it doesn't mean that there's anything nefarious happening. It's just that the law, it's just what the law is in Pennsylvania. So it could be delayed up to eight days or even longer in Pennsylvania. Wait a minute. So the millions of dollars and all of the campaigning and videos you've put out there for early voting and everything else that you've done, we're ready to go. Pennsylvania, early vote, we, we are, our election system is rock solid. I've seen the videos. We're ready to go here in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Like we've got everything taken care of. Oh, but now we might not be able to count the votes on time. Like we have that problem on our hands. Really? Well, they got to deal with the Fetterman blowback, you know? <laughs> yeah. One potato, two potato. One, let me, let me count this. I wonder if this has anything to do with the hundreds of thousands of additional ballots, the unverified ballots that were just mailed out in Pennsylvania without authorization. Maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe this is part of the story you haven't heard yet. Listen to this in Pennsylvania. 15 state Republican representatives sent a letter to the acting secretary of state after they discovered over 240,000 illicit ballots were mailed in the state prior to the 2022 midterm elections. Two, 240,000 illicit ballots sent out that shouldn't have been sent out. Here's their letter. Dear Acting Secretary, we, the undersigned members, are writing with great concern about the process used to ensure that only qualified legal voters vote in the 2022 general election. Due to the 2018 directive from your office instructing counties to register voters without verification of identity, the need to verify the identity and eligibility of mail and absentee ballot applications is even more critical to the integrity of our elections. As of J October 21st, 2022, records of the mail ballot data shows that counties have already mailed over 240,000 un verified ballots. So what does this mean? Well, the letter notes two main contradictory statements that have been coming out of the Secretary of State's office and the De Deputy Secretary of Elections, so who testified in court that unverified ballots can still be mailed out to applicants, but wouldn't be counted officially in the election until an ID was produced. Okay, the other comment, which was contradictory, claim that ballots cannot be sent out in the first place until an ID is first provided. So Which what is, is it? it? Either you, so you're going to send out the ballots without ID verification, or you're going to set, or you're going to wait till the end and get the ID verification, or you're going to wait to get the ID verification before you send them out. What is it? We don't know. So we just sent out 240 ballots. Whether Hope you have they ID, don't come back. <laughs> whether you have ID or not, we don't give a shit. We'll just send them out. And by the way, I'm from Pennsylvania. 
it's a very, very, you know, tight race typically. Right. And so you have like just 10,000 votes can swing an election. Yeah. So you sent out 240,000 unverified ballots. Okay. Nothing to see here. No problems. So they say either the ballots were mailed to unverified applicants or ballots are not mailed to unverified applicants. Both statements cannot be true. And they talk about the election verification system, which is the HAVV system, the verification data. And they said that the, and you can actually read this for yourself. You can actually go to the website and see it right on the Social Security Administration's website to verify the accuracy of the name, uh, the date of birth, last four digits of your Social Security, and the ID, whether or not you're gonna get one of these ballots. And right now, yes, 249,000 of these sent out without the verification. So there you go, thanks. That's very strange. I mean, so the fix is in, guys. I mean, I think Democrats in the United States are girding themselves for a really dark day in early November. It's going to be a bloodbath. Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens both in Pennsylvania, and we're going to talk more about that in a second, uh, just also nationwide in Arizona in Michigan, um, New York. I'm watching that race very closely, the New York governor's race, Kathy Hochul um, and Lee Zeldin. That's going to be fascinating to watch. Uh, and so we could see a sea change here. Um, yes, but history tells us that the president's party almost always loses the midterm. Mm -hmm. That's normal. And so every and it's it just it sort of astounds me that every time it happens, people act like it's a it's a big drama. We we expect it. We expect it even more because we have such an unpopular president uh, where it, pe members of his own party don't even want him to campaign for them. They're like, no, you can you don't need to come and stump for me. We're good. We're good here. Uh, and so because of the extreme unpopularity of the president, the terrible economy and the war that was not happening when this president took office and now is, we expect a bloodbath even more than history would al already tell us. 